Congressman Paul Tonko joining us on the phone. He was at the State of the Union address last night. And Congressman, how are you? Hey, Congressman. I'm doing well. Uh, it's Jason, right? Yeah. So it's good to uh, to be with you. Yep, it's been, it's been a while. Say hi to Dave, uh, my co-host. Hello, David. Hey. And uh, uh, it's good to be with you. It was uh, quite the night last night. Uh, the State of the Union, I find, is always an exciting evening. Uh, it brings together all the branches of government, as we know, but a lot of visitors that come to town, cabinet members, members of the Supreme Court. So, you know, it's uh, it's quite the gathering, and it's uh, always an interesting moment. Yeah, uh, Congressman Richard Hanna was telling us on the phone that he was mingling with some of the Democrats, and that's a, that's a practice that you Democrats and the Republicans have adopted in recent years to show yeah. that you can cross party lines. Uh, were you sitting in that type of, a, of an arrangement last night? I was sitting next to Peter King, who is a representative from the uh, – southernmost portion of New York's delegation mm -hmm. uh, and was, uh, you know, right near the Energy and Commerce chair, um, you know, from uh, the state of Michigan, so who's a Republican. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was a good mix. And uh, I thought that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer that uh, we need bipartisan strategies. You know, we're there to build this greatest nation here in greater heights. So uh, let's do it. Let's do it in a bipartisan fashion in a way that, you uh, uh, reaches to the best of us. And that's something, as you mentioned, sitting uh, you know, with other folks from different party lines. That's something that the uh, president brought up in his speech yesterday. Uh, one of the things that he said maybe in his presidency went south as far as working together as a group and maybe uh, regretting some, some work that could have been done there. Yeah, I thought the, uh, you know, the president acknowledged that. He was being quite honest and uh, you know, you know, brought himself into that equation saying, you know, we wish he could have done a better job with bringing us together. But I think the acrimony reflects some of the uh, discord in society in general. You know, there's, uh, you know, there's a need for more interconnection uh, with all of us. I think technology sometimes can destroy that opportunity uh, to uh, personalize uh, a lot of our relationships in a, in a more profound way. So there's a challenge to all of us to uh, work through these uh, times where technology has bolstered us, but at the same time needs to be disciplined because we can become uh, somewhat robotic in our response. Mm -hmm. And, Congressman, I, I brought up uh, at the beginning of our program uh, earlier, as we mentioned, we were going to talk to you, uh, some of the accolades and things that you've uh, accomplished in your career as I met you as the Assemblyman in uh, Amsterdam, moving on to NYSERDA, and then becoming a Congressman. And I know you've had some close conversations, even flying on Air Force One with the President at times. So knowing him from the beginning, the inception of his presidency, and now the last uh, address as the uh, State of the Union yesterday, your thoughts on changes, how he has changed, how the, his, his, his remarks have changed. Uh, can you give us an idea on that? Sure. I think, um, you know, obviously the president, uh, having served in Washington since his presidency initiated, um, I can see the, uh, the somewhat the transformation where he came in as this uh, – relatively young uh, senator who became a president, now grown more worldly in his viewpoint. I think that he's uh, attempting not only to build this nation, the greatest nation in the world, to even greater heights, but to, you know, fit, that, fit us into a, a national, international situation where we're a leader and a partner on issues like climate change, where we uh, we uh, promote peace throughout the world and where we uh, develop allies that will enable us to do that, where we don't go it alone. So I think his, uh, his thinking has been stretched, and he has taken on some tremendous social issues that need to be addressed uh, from, uh, you know, the efforts for uh, uh, an innovation economy, uh, responding to climate change in a way that uh, enables us to leave a better tomorrow for our, our next generation uh, being sound stewards of the environment uh, to making certain that we can compete in an international way with uh, an embracing of technology and research that allows us to do cutting edge job creation that will be available, jobs that will be available for everyone from the trades over to the PhD. Talking with the Congressman Paul Tonko at the State of the Union address last night here on the Talk of the Town at 100.7 FM WUTQ. We were speaking with Congressman Hanna about somewhat of a rift in the Republican Party. There was an article in the New York Times over the weekend. How about the identity of the Democratic Party with Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton? Older 
older presidential candidates and maybe a lack of younger blood in the Democratic Party at those levels? Do you yeah, see that as a know, problem? I, I think what you have is uh, a huge concern, for, and I certainly identify with it. I'm in the midst of that battle to fight for a stronger middle income community and um, and uh, uh, making certain that, uh, you know, the working poor, that all of us are empowered with a stronger sense of purchasing power. And um, there are different approaches to it. And I think that, uh, you know, that's created somewhat of the competitiveness in both parties. But, um, you know, I think that uh, all in all, hopefully we will come to the uh, realization that uh, there has got to be this, this um uh, synergy amongst all of us as Americans in a bipartisan format that really speaks to economic equality, where we have the great many of us, the working families and the middle income community, uh, being responded to with fairness in tax policy and the affordability of maintaining a home and uh, gaining a college education and, you know, pursuing uh, the day to day dreams that. Uh, we all should uh, see as an American opportunity. And uh, with the talk, you know, yesterday, I brought this up to uh, Congressman Hanna. It seemed like there was a lot of things that the president brought up over his presidency that maybe didn't get done or he would like to see uh, get done. But one thing that he was strong on, uh, I believe, was national security and the fact that he says, you know, our our nation is still the strongest. And uh, I don't know oh, what, yeah. Yeah, what your thoughts are as well, far I, as... Well, I certainly, it's what I found most optimistic about the presentation last night, his speech last uh, mm -hmm. evening. Um, it was about growing the economy, strengthening that household income. Uh, you know, it's been one thing to grow jobs, but now we have to strengthen that annual household income. It sure. can't be flatlined. There's no American dream that can uh, then come from that. And then the other was strong, uh, stronger America. We are the strongest nation in the world, and we're going to maintain that. And I thought his spirit of optimism there, the strength of our military, the reinforcement of our soldiers, our military uh, individuals, that is absolutely essential, to be committed to providing them the technology they need to keep them safe and to know that we are that strongest nation in the world uh, that responds then to our national security and the worldwide efforts for peace. And going back to your uh, first point there, bringing it home maybe domestically, a little softer on, uh, on Speaker Ryan's ideas of maybe some federal tax cuts for low- and middle-income workers. Also talked about raising minimum wage, uh, immigration laws, and uh, stricter gun uh, you know, restrictions. But I think as you bring, about, uh, bring it to the fact of um, you know, home, the domestic thing, uh, as I mentioned, the low- and middle-income uh, workers, but uh, also the Medicaid as far as that yeah. goes. You know, I think it's all about investment. You know, and it's our priorities. A budget is nothing more than a reflection of who we are and what we want to become. And I think the investments in research, in training and retraining of our workers, of education and higher education for our students, all of those elements will grow the strongest economy and enable us to empower the middle-income community working poor in a way that gives them that purchasing ability and gives them the opportunity to tether those dreams. Uh, that we all should be encouraged to dream. Were you surprised to see Kim Davis, the Kentucky clerk who opposed gay marriage, at the State of the Union address last night? Um, <laughs> you know, there are no surprises on that night. There are so many guests that are welcome. And uh, it speaks to the great diversity of thinking and the diversity of us as a population. And uh, it's the, the quote work of America. So, uh you know, you uh, you set the tone. It's optimism. It's growing the uh, uh, the middle income community of this country, and it's uh, enabling us to stay a world leader that uh, all got celebrated in one fell swoop last. Night. <laughs>